Hi, my name is Joe Maroney. I've been a radio control modeler and enthusiast since uh, 1990. Been building airplanes, flying airplanes all that time, having a great time. But one of the things that I saw about five years ago that absolutely intrigued me was a workbench that you could raise and lower electronically. Now I had a workbench at that time. But that workbench was a fixed height about 40 inches high and I built all my airplanes on a fixed surface. But the thought occurred to me, wouldn't it be wonderful to have a workbench that you could raise and lower at will and therefore make the job more comfortable depending upon what you were doing at the time. If you're building a large airplane and you have to place it on the table and reach the upper part of a say a triplane wing, you're going to be standing on a on some kind of a, of, a, of a stool or something to get to the top of the plane. Vice versa, when you're working on the landing gear, you practically have to kneel on the ground to get down low enough. So this idea of having a workbench whose height can be raised and lowered intrigued me so much that about six months ago I set about to get one. I looked at all the commercial tables that are out there and they start at like fifteen to eighteen hundred dollars, which was way beyond my budget and they weren't exactly what I was looking for. They were the wrong dimensions, they didn't have the right height adjustability, there were a bunch of things about them that just wasn't right. So what I did was I designed my own work table to my own specifications and then set about building it. And what I'd like to do right now is give you a quick overview of the table, the workbench itself, and how it functions. This workbench right here is dimensionally eight feet long and two feet wide. I set those dimensions because when I build airplanes, wings and things are long and I require a cord that is probably no more than 24 inches, at least what I'll be building. And then airplanes that sit on tables usually have a footprint of their front wheels that probably is no more than two feet. So this is a, this is a workbench where a, a, a fully built fuselage could sit on the work table and, and be perfectly comfortable sitting there. Right now, this table is set at a height of 30 inches, which is its minimum height. When I raise this table, I can bring it to a height of 48 inches, which is just under my chin, so I can be very close to what I'm working with. So what I'm going to do right now is demonstrate how the table works. Down here, I have a control panel. This control panel has two rocker switches, and the rocker switches are going to actuate two motors, and the motors are going to drive the table up. So first I'll turn on power, and for power supply here, uh, a detail that I'll just give you a quick view on right now is I'm using a power supply from an old computer. It's a 12 volt power supply uh, that can supply about 8 amperes of current to motors, DC motors, and it didn't cost me anything. So that was a freebie on the project. Okay, I'm now going to bring the table up. I'm going to press the two rocket switches up, and the table will begin to elevate. Now it's moving at about a quarter or three-eighths of an inch per second. It's not fast, but it's fast enough for what I need it for. I'm going to pause it right there because I've come up roughly a foot, or maybe not, not less, not much of a foot, less than a foot. On the front of this table here, I have a level. And I'm looking at this level as the table is going up or coming down. And I try to keep the table level at all times. The two motors that are being used here are not synchronized. They're simply going at their own speed. So if for any reason the two motors get out of synchronization and the table starts to tilt one way or the other, I just simply back off on one of the rocker switches and level it and then continue on. And that way I prevent my sliding mechanisms, which are out here, from actually binding. So I'm going to bring it up now to its full extension. And as I'm doing so, I'm seeing that it's staying fairly level, which is good. But if I had a heavy weight on one end of the table, it might not raise as quickly as the other end. Now these two motors are staying pretty well in synchronization, so I'm not having to do anything to change the relative speeds with regards to each other.
Okay, the table is now at its maximum height, which is now 48 inches. So it started at a height of 30 inches down here, it's now at a height of 48 inches. There are very few times that I might use it at either extreme, but there were times when I wanted it at those extremes, so therefore that was the design objective, to get it to be able to move a total of, a, a total of 18 inches up and down. The other nice thing about this was that I just simply had to hold those buttons in place until it reached its, its top level and there are automatic cutoff switches that cut off the two motors so I didn't have to worry about that. that. That was built into the devices that I made use of for the lifting mechanism. Okay, so that's the table. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's built with uh, a lot of straight wood. I, I don't have the ability to use much in the way of metal here because I'm not a metal worker, I'm mainly a woodworker. But the frame of this table, this, 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 these longitudinal members here are, are from um, a lumber yard that I uh, use frequently that sells very high quality lumber. This is mahogany and it's a very straight grain kind of mahogany that is used for flooring. It's five quarter inch thick and it was the straightest stuff I could get. One of the problems I was dealing with in the design of the table was dimensional stability. You can buy all the 2x4s you want from the various uh, big box stores, and what you're going to get is something that turns into a pretzel about three weeks after it dries out. I didn't want that to happen because I have very, very close dimensional requirements on this table, which would absolutely obviate using any of the commercially available 2x4s, 2x6s, or whatever. So I started with good mahogany, which is very well kiln dried, very dimensionally stable. Each of the uprights here is a 4x4 four four piece of uh, construction grade fur. Again, well dried out, uh, not going to be dimensionally unstable. And they form the basis of the weight uh, control here. Everything is resting on this pillar. There are four of these pillars, and these, are, these had to be mounted uh, so that everything would, would, be, would be mounted on them. Everything here is, is mounted to these. Everything was also set up to be perfectly square because later on, as I get to tell you a little bit about the, uh, how I control the sliding mechanism here, if things weren't square, they would bind, and binding would be the nemesis of the project. The table is also mounted, as you can see, on rollers. Now, the rollers to me are important because as I build model airplanes, I'm frequently moving things around to reconfigure the shop a little bit, and things that are nailed down become just very inconvenient to deal with. So my work table is a portable work table, a movable work table, and I can reconfigure. If I have to have something hanging off one end, I can pull it down this way. If I have wings on here that I have to put on a fuselage, they can be out this way and I can position the table so that I get plenty of space for a large wing to be able to uh, rest in space and not hit a wall. So it's portable, it's levelable, and it is made out of the best dimensionally stable materials that I can possibly afford.